Hello everyone, welcome to project number two of our OpenCV tutorial series. Here we're gonna to try to attempt face recognition. So for that purpose, the first thing you wanna do is go into runtime, and uh, this is the link which will all, already be there in the description for you. Just go ahead and click on change runtime. And you wanna make sure you're under GPU and then just save, because for this purpose, we would be using open uh, the GPU cloud from the core lab. And I'm going to maximize this a little bit. So in order for you to go into the project too, if you go into the contents page and you have projects right here on the part three section and we are under face recognition part. So once we are in this section, uh, we want to run this particular code. Here we are basically cloning the repository the face recognition repository and we have some images and some files that we are going to be using for this particular project we are also going to be installing the face recognition api and uh, this was i believe designed by adam gatekey that's the name of the person if you just google face recognition just go into google and we'll do adam face recognition so this is considered to be one of the one of the easiest, one of the fastest, and one of the most accurate face recognition libraries out there. And it was developed by this gentleman, and we are going to be using it in our project right now. So coming down here, uh, once we run this thing, it will go ahead and clone the repository. It will also install the face recognition library for us. And we are also asking Colab to change the directory to face recognition that we can access the files directly. So it'll take a few seconds. And here in this section, now you can see there is a face recognition folder. And right here in this section, you can see all these files are now available for us to test. So this project is basically divided into three steps. One is cloning the repository, installing all the dependencies that you need for this project. The second is encoding finding the encoding profile of the face images the third is using those encoding profiles to now detect unknown faces so we'll go into the basics of each of them and try to understand what it is so basically a face has its own properties a human face the way a person looks is defined by their eyes the shape of the eyes the distance between the eyes the nose, the size of the lips, the play of placement of the ears compared to the rest of the face. So these are all features that define a person's face. And encoding is just using those features in order to create a profile for a person. And those encoding details are specific to that person. So it's not gonna be common. It's not something which can be replaced with another person's encoding. A person's encoding profile is his own, his or her own encoding profile. And we are going to be using that for our project today. So the first thing you want to do is import face recognition library that we installed up there. We are also going to be using NumPy today, NumPy as NP. And before we go into further details, let me maximize this a little bit. Also move this guy up so it's much more readable for us. A little bit more, I think. Okay, perfect. So import NumPy as NP. We are also be going to be using Google Colab's CV2 underscore IM show so that we can display the images here in the Colab. And for that purpose, we will be using Google Colab patches. And from there, import CV2 underscore IM show. We might also use, of course, OpenCV. So don't forget about OpenCV. That's the bread and butter of this project. So once we have OpenCV and all these libraries imported for us, we will now go ahead and create the encoding profiles for each face images. So if you go into the uh, project folder under the face recognition, you can see there are some images like the Donald Trump image, Elon Musk image, Arthur Jeff Bezos, and these are all images of people who we already know. And these other set of images right here, unknown, 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 these are all images that the computer 
or the program does not know. And we will be using these images to use for face recognition in the next step. So now for now, we will use Donald Trump's image and Elon Musk image and Jeff Bezos image to create the encoding profile. So the first step is creating the encoding profile. And for that purpose, let's create the encoding profile for face one, face number one. And let's call this maybe Elon Musk's face number one. And we will call the face recognition library up there. Hey, face recognition library, please come to our help. And we want you to load this image file of Elon Musk. I have Elon Musk in my project folder and it's called Elon. It is, let me come back here. It's called Elon.jpg. And you just use Elon JPEG to so load the image file for us. And good, good job. Okay, so once face recognition has loaded the image file, now we will also request our face recognition library to create the encoding profile for us. So we'll say face one, your encodings are given by face recognition. Please, face recognition library, come back again. And we need your help this time to create face encodings. Encodings. And for that purpose, we will call face one. Use the encoding profile from face one. And once we have face one, you're going to call, okay, only use the array zeroth element of the face one. That's now created the encoding profiles of face one encodings. Perfect. Similarly, let's create the face encoding profiles for the other gentleman. And for that purpose, we'll just copy the code from here and paste it here. Do another paste here. Now this one we will call phase two. Okay, phase three. Phase three, we will change this to phase two. We will change this to phase three. And instead of Elon, we might say Donald Trump. And that's the file name Donald Trump. The next is Jeff Bezos, given by this spelling. So come back here. And instead of this, we'll call Jeff Bezos.jpg. So it has now created the encoding profiles for all the three images. Let's bring them in an array so that the program can later call them individually. So we'll, we'll say, I will create an array called known face encodings. So these are the encodings that the program already knows and we will call them inside an array. Okay, so under this profile, we'll call face one encoding, comma face two, encoding comma face three encoding good so this is my known face encodings now i will also give these encodings names in the same order so we'll say known face names and these are the names of our people who we are training them oops okay come down here so we'll say the first guy is elon musk the second person is Donald Trump. And the third person is Jeff Bezos. Okay, so we have all the three images. So we have created the encoding profiles. And now we have all the image names also inside an array. So whenever this encoding one is called, it will refer to Elon Musk. Whenever encoding two is called, it will refer to Donald Trump. Similarly for Jeff Bezos. So in this section, we only created the encoding profiles. Now coming down to the next section, this is creating the run face recognition. So we are now gonna use those encoding profiles to create and start running the face recognition aspect. So let's call, let's use one of the unknown images that we have. And we will probably use unknown EL, and EL is basically the abbreviation for Elon Musk, DO is Donald Trump, ER is Earth Roll from here, and JE is Jeff Bezos. 
I don't know why I left it as J-E. And you might also notice a spelling mistake here. Just be mindful of this particular image. It's already, already an error. So I'll try to remove it in the repository later on. But for now, for the purpose of this video, we'll roll with it. Now, the first file name we will call. OK, let's read the first file and we'll call the Elon Musk's image, which is the one here, unknown el.jpg, and we'll call unknown el lambda. We're going to test you and to see your who you are and whose name you carry. So you have file name, and we'll say this unknown image is right here for us. Oh, it looks like Colab doesn't like us to use GPO runtime. It's giving us an error, but don't worry, because very soon we are going to be using your GPU collab. And at that point, per point, they won't be so angry with us. But let's come down. So we are now reading this unknown image of Elon Musk, and we will use face recognition dot load image, the same thing that we did here. In, in fact, we might copy this whole section from here. And we will just load this image that we grow this function we have here. So we'll say load image file. And we'll use the file name that we created up here. Perfect. Now we have unknown image to draw. We're calling calls this image as something that we are going to be using to write down. In fact, we don't need to draw this image. Let's call the encoding profile for this guy. So we'll say, okay, where are your face locations and where are your face encodings? So you have your face locations, which are given by face recognition dot face locations using the unknown image that we have up here. Now we are also going to be creating the encodings and we'll use the encoding function face. Encodings of this new image that we just uploaded is going to have face recognition encoding and face recognition face encoding. Unknown image and face locations. Okay, so we have now created the encodings for this unknown image. Very good. So let's now try to compare this face encodings with the encodings that we already have here. For that purpose, we will now use a for loop. For, and we'll first zip the face locations and the face encodings. So we'll do zip face locations and face encodings. The reason for that is because we want to compare both of them together. So we have face encodings as well. And these face locations and face encodings can be compared in two different formats also. So we'll say face locations will give us the top, the right. So these are the top, right, bottom, and left corners of the so you have bottom and left. So this is referring to the face locations, which we will get it from this zip file. And we also have the face encoding for individual. So you have the face encoding and the face locations. Face encoding is for the individual faces. And uh, this is just the array called face encoding. So you're reading through each one of them looping through the for loop. Once you have that, now we will try to create a match and we try to compare our face encoding from here to the face encoding that we already know from here. So let's go ahead, do that for us. We'll say matches and matches is equal to the comparison between the face encoding of this new image versus the face encoding of the images that we know already. Come here, 
face recognition dot compare and this is face recognition function so it's going to compare the faces from our known face encodings and the face encoding that we have here perfect now initially we will call our face the unknown face as unknown unknown i don't know you initially we will call it as unknown because later on once the program is able to identify or recognize whose face it is it should automatically replace this name with one of the names that we have here okay coming back now we are trying to compare the distances from the comparison that we created here we'll say face distances is equal to face recognition dot face distance known face encoding comma face encoding now here we are just creating again that distance and then now we'll try using this distance we will try to now identify which one is the best for us so coming down here we'll say the best match index now this is the index of these three images so this is zero one two so you're just identifying which index it is we will say it is given by the numpy of minimum distance between the face distances. So all the face distances this is nothing but it's identifying all the face distances and now it will give us the least face distance. So we'll say okay the least face distance from the face distances array will be my best match index. Okay perfect. Now if matches best match index is available give me the name of our known face names so we'll call it this call this known face names and we'll say the best match index is your new name so this is basically the face recognition aspect so you're first identifying the face distances and from the face distances you will come to know which is the minimum which is the least distance between the original face and the unknown face so that distance will be considered as our, we'll come to know our index and we will use the matches that we use here to then call that particular face name. And we'll use our known face names array to, to get the name of the real person. Once we have the name of the person, now we can go ahead and draw the bounding box on the face and also put the text so we as a user can identify who this is. So you, we will use OpenCV's draw functions, which is the rectangle and the put text function to put down the text in the bounding box on our image. So we'll say CV2 rectangle unknown, and you're drawing it on the unknown face here, the unknown image. In fact, let's read the unknown image that we have here. We reading it through the file name. We will also read it through OpenCV. We'll say unknown image to draw. And this is the function that we will use. CV2 underscore I am read file name. Here we are reading it in the OpenCV format. So OpenCV can use this image to draw our rectangle. So we'll say OpenCV here, come here, put it down here. Once we have the OpenCV image, we can draw the rectangles, and the rectangles are defined by the bottom left or the top right corner. So we say left, top, right, bottom. Perfect. So now you're defining the color. You'll we'll say green color, 0 to 55, 0, and a thickness of 3. So it will take care of the drawing of the rectangle for us. Similarly, we'll now draw the, write the text of the person that we know. So we'll use the unknown image to draw here. And we'll write the name, whatever name that we want to put by using this name string. We'll say name. 
and we will say let's write it on the top left corner of the rectangle which is given by left top but we will give it a little bit of indent on the top so we'll say minus 20 so it's just above the top left corner of the image and OpenCV has certain fonts that we can use so we'll use the basic font which is the font Hershey simplex one zero color will give it as maybe red color and we will use the thickness of two and the line format of double a cv2 line underscore a so this will just simply write the text for us once everything is done once the for loop is also completed we will ask our collab to please go ahead and display this unknown image to draw that we just created here so once we have this thing, OpenCV should go ahead and run this. So we'll go ahead and run this. And it looks like there is an error here. The error says invalid syntax. And it is probably because we did not say where are we getting this from. So we should say face encoding top right bottom in zip. We have to say in zip and that should take care of our error looks like there is still an error and they are not happy because we put down too many rectangles at most six arguments and it looks like we gave them eight arguments how come so we have the unknown image oh did we say rectangle instead of rectangle we should have put put text because we are putting up a text here and that should take care of our thing so we can now see that it is able to detect the person and it's also able to put the bounding box on it. And if you go ahead and open this folder and open the unknown EL folder here, you can see the original image is right here. And this is the face recognition image. So let's try some other image. We have a couple of other options. We'll open the unknown, which is basically Donald Trump's image. And we'll see if the file is able to detect it for us. So we'll say unknown do here so it can read this new image and it's able to draw the bonding box on Donald Trump's face. So it's able to do the face recognition aspect and you can see it's pretty fast it's able to do it almost in real time. Now this is something which is done in Colab. Now if you want to do the same thing on a desktop or through a webcam the same thing can be applied where we are reading a file name instead of that you will be supplying it through, through a webcam and you can use a file a while loop a true while loop which would continuously loop through all the images of the webcam and then pass this as a function so this whole code right here can be made as a function so we'll say okay def and you can say function some function and you can pass the image that we want and instead of this image we'll say file name so we can then replace this file name with here so we just uncomment this and instead of taking it from here we just call this as a function you bring everything in this as part of a as part of this particular def function so we'll say okay you're part of this def function and once we have it here we can now instead of show displaying it here on the browser for ourselves we can then return this variable and that will go to go back to the desktop where who is that while loop who is calling the images to return i'll go back and undo our changes because that is something which we cannot do here in cola but just an idea if in case you are interested 